Chapter 6 We left early in the morning, too early for my liking but this way I was able to watch the sun rise. My eyes were droopy and as we packed up the last of our supplies, I found myself growing guilty about leaving Bilbo. I stood at the door to his room, contemplating whether or not to wake him up and beg him to join but Gandalf's hand on my shoulder pulled me away. We will leave the contract here. Maybe his mind will change? Gandalf said softly to me. I gave him a half smile and did my best to ignore the scoff from Thorin behind me. I walked away from the door and into the pantry. To my surprise it looked almost completely untouched from the night before. I reached for a loaf of sourdough to pack with me. Snacks were going to be a necessity. You okay lass? A voice asked from behind me. Buffer was standing with a cloak in his hands that I could only assume was for me. I sighed, yeah I'm alright, a little upset to leave my brother but I am excited for what's to come. I completely understand what it's like to leave family. I hope you know you have found a family with us. We are happy you are here. He said with a smile. I smiled back and hugged him. I needed that talk. It would be hard to leave Bilbo but it was nice to know that I had friends I could rely on. We left the Shire before anyone had woken up. I don't remember ever being up this early. I paused for a moment and looked towards the rising sun. The sky was filled with deep reds and oranges. A shove from behind broke my gaze on the horizon. I turned around quickly, rage replacing the calmness from before, and found myself face to face with the dwarf lord. He leaned down so his mouth was in line with my ear. Don't start this journey off slowing us down. He whispered low enough for only me to hear. His voice caused me to hesitate and I stuttered on a response. I never managed to get a response out before he left. As made our way to the edge of the old forest just outside of the Shire, I spotted fourteen beautiful horses and two equally beautiful ponies. This one is for you Miss Baggins, Balin told me, leading me over to a small black pony with a salt and pepper mane, his name is Arrow. I thanked him and ran my hands through the pony's mane. He was truly beautiful. I walked around the front of the pony all while keeping my hand on its head. We locked eyes and I smiled. It was going to be fun to have a companion that wouldn't complain. You are going to have to ride it. Thorin said from behind me, causing me to jump. I looked at him with big eyes. Ride it? Oh. No thanks. I much prefer walking. We Baggins are known for our skills in walking great distances. I responded. There was no way that I was getting on that horse. He looked at me with amusement and I kept pushing. You know I read a story about this hobbit who tried to ride a horse and fell off of it and broke his spine? I'm not looking to break my spine thank you very much. I said, looking around at the other dwarves for support. Sorry lass I'm not asking for your opinion. He told me with his back turned. He waved his hand in a dismissing way and two dwarves, Norai and Dori rode beside me and hoisted me up onto Arrow. I held onto the reins tightly, too scared to make any sudden movements. We starting out slow, most of the company ensuring I was okay on the horse. Thorin rode ahead. I guess the safety of one burglar was too little for the dwarf lord to worry about. How much do you want to bet our second hobbit will show up? Dwin asked the rest of the group. The majority of the dwarves bet that he wouldn't come. I bet that he would but held little faith in him. He was always very panicky and didn't adjust well to change. He was probably making himself breakfast and going outside for a smoke. I noticed Gandalf, along with a select group of others, had faith that he would. It was comforting to see. The bet was thirty coins. Not that I had thirty coins to wager. I assumed we didn't need any if we were raiding a dragon's keep. The wages were placed and we continued on our path, each step was one step further from all I had ever known. Thirty minutes after placing our bets I heard noise behind us. Someone was tearing through the woods. I turned around quickly and sighed in relief as I saw Bilbo running towards us. Wait! Wait! He called to the company who, in turn, 
stopped and turned around to watch him catch up. He waved the contract up in the air, bringing it over to Barlin. I signed it. He told him confidently. Barlin nodded and pulling out some eye magnifier. He held it up close, adjusting it a few times before looking back and Bilbo and folding the contract back down. Everything appears to be in order. Welcome Master Baggins, to the company of Thor and Oakenshelt, Barlin told Bilbo. Bilbo looked up at me with a happy expression and I too found myself sharing a big smile. I looked beside me and Gandalf who was looking fondly between the two of us. Turning my head forward, I looked eyes with the leader of our company. Thorin rolled his eyes and started moving forwards. Give him the pony. He said without turning around again. Bilbo protested, similar to myself, before being lifted up and placed onto a pony. We rode in silence for a short while before bags of coins were being tossed in the air. What's happening? Bilbo asked me. They took wages on whether or not you'd turn up. Most of them bet you wouldn't. Gandalf told him pulling up beside him. And what about you guys? Bilbo questioned looking at each of us. Gandalf hesitated, building suspense before two bags of coins were tossed our way. I never doubted you for a second. Gandalf told him smiling. And you? You didn't doubt me either? Bilbo asked, looking into my eyes. I did. I just couldn't bet against you, I admitted, looking down at Arrow, but I am happy you proved me wrong. We continued to ride and Gandalf moved to the front of the group to talk with Thorin. I looked beside me at Bilbo who was trying to keep his cool on his horse. What changed your mind? I asked. I thought about what you said about looking for new things and I realized you were right. This will be good for us. We can't stay cooped up in Bag End because we are scared. And it's true. I have a home that, if I do chose, I could stay forever. But they don't have that and I don't want to risk regretting the opportunity to help. And I couldn't let you go alone. He smirked at the last part. I laughed with him. It was good to have him with me. As we continued walking through the forest the company grew louder. Everyone was getting more comfortable with each other and I could feel the growing excitement. What was once only a happy dream was now become a reality for those who had had their homes taken from them all those moons ago. Buffer pulled his horse up beside me and Bilbo's horse halted. He was not having very much luck riding. I, on the other hand, was having a great time. Arrow seemed happy with me and we both shared the connection. I can't help but notice lass. You don't have the same feet as Bilbo. They are not very hobbit-like, Buffer said to me, pulling me away from looking at my horse. Oh. That's because Bilbo and I are half-siblings. His father had me with a dwarf woman. I'm half of both. I have the height, shape, face and appetite of a hobbit but everything else is more dwarf. I responded with a little laugh. Growing up it was hard to be a mix of both. I never felt like I fit in with the hobbits because of the way I looked. Bilbo was always there to include me but it was nice feeling like I finally could relate to everyone in the group. Before Buffer could respond Bilbo sneezed. Wait. Stop, stop. We have to turn around. He told the group, frantically patting down his clothes. What on earth is the matter? Gandalf asked, annoyed with the hold up. I forgot my handkerchief. Bilbo responded sounding very upset. He looked over at me and I almost laughed. Here, Buffer said, ripping off some cloth from his robe and handing it out to Bilbo, use this. Bilbo reluctantly took the cloth and looked at it with disgust before tucking it away and deciding not to use it. Our worlds were going to become significantly different and this was just the start. The simple things we were used to like handkerchiefs and soap and an abundance of food would not be things we could have as easily as we used to. You'll have to manage without pocket handkerchiefs, and lots of other things, Bilbo Baggins. You two were born to the rolling hills and little rivers of the Shire. But home is now behind you. The world is ahead. Gandalf said to him, smiling and looking ahead with wonder in his eyes. 
We walked until nightfall. My conversation with Boffer continued and I could see us becoming great friends. He seemed up understand how I felt about my past and what I wanted my future to look like. Most of the dwarves seemed keen on getting to know me and I figured they hadn't had much experience with females for a long while. The blonde-haired brother I found to be very flirtatious whereas his brother was kinder and softer. I was grateful for the company but noticed the one dwarf who refused to speak to me was Thorin. We had a back and forth going in bag end but now that the journey had started, he seemed to want nothing to do with me. I tried to pay no mind to him. If he was going to give me the silent treatment I would do it right back. I didn't care who he thought he was. When the sun and the moon traded places in the sky we set up camp atop an overhanging cliff. It was quite sheltered and it seemed to be perfect for setting up camp. Or maybe that was just the tiredness speaking. When I laid my head down, the moss underneath seemed more comfortable than any pillow I had used before. Sleep came quickly and I didn't catch what Bilbo said to me before I fell asleep. I'm glad you enjoyed that video slash gameplay. Just remember to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below. Until next time, goodbye!